Today I'm going to learn some riding skills from a pro, a multi-time downhill world champion and second place finisher at Rebel Rampage. You may know this guy as G Atherton. When he's been a naughty boy, his mum still calls him George. <laughs> Thanks, Dom. Gee, we're, we're on your mountain. This is your bike park, so we've got the place to ourselves, luckily. But we've got quite a fast section down here into this big berm where you can see there's some braking bumps from other riders. You don't look like you're braking very much, don't you, to be fair. But what would you say for riders that maybe, you know, should they brake early? What about the bumps? You just crack on and go through them the fastest way? Well, you can see the enormous straight behind. So you're really carrying a lot of speed into this turn. And then, as you can see here, the braking bumps go all the way into the turn and carry on around the turn, showing that people are coming in, they're braking quite late and they're braking around the turn as they realize they're carrying too much speed, which is almost opposite to what you want. You know, the braking needs to be done early. So you're controlling the speed coming into the turn. And then here, as you're entering the turn, you need to be off the brakes, almost letting the brakes off as you go around the turn to give you that control. So the bike's nice and settled and then you're carrying speed out afterwards. I guess with a downhill track, if you're racing, you'll have done it 10 times. You've practiced it, but if you're doing this the first time, how do you know you're just using your best guess or are you looking around to where you're going, to judge your speed? Yeah, looking around the turn is, is super important. I think if you compare the bike to say your body, I always think of the braking as, as like the mind of the bike. It's where the, in, the, the intelligence can come from. And you can use the brakes to make the bike work for you so you, you know what the bike needs to do if you, if you need to settle if you need to track you know the braking can control all of that so you know people don't often realize that the, there's more to braking than just on and off you know you need to be able to brake smoothly you need to be able to sometimes snap the brake to kick the back end out and all of these little tricks that you can do with the brakes as you get better you learn what's going to happen you know in, in, in a big turn like this you can get it all done nice and early, carry the speed in a tight turn. You can use the braking to slide the bike slightly. You know, there's a lot to it and I think it's often overlooked and people could probably work on that and, and develop that to affect their riding really. Oh, nice. Let's see it then. Thinking about what your front and rear wheels do, like I sometimes think about my front brake coming off it in like flat corners. I don't know if that's me. Are you thinking about what each brake is doing to each tire? Yeah, but it gets to the point where you're, the balance between the front and rear, you know, you're, you're doing it subconsciously. But I, can, I think generally, you know, as you're experimenting with that, you know, something to focus on is coming into fast turns. You know, you can you can use the front brake to to load the bike to kind of seat yourself into a, whether it's a fast berm or a, even a flat turn, and then you know the the back brake to kind of if you're needing the back end to step out a bit more. I think you know you need to be able to that modulation front and rear. You know, you need to be able to do that through a turn as as the bike does something unpredictable. You know, whether that's it kicking out on a route or you know becoming unsteady. You know, you need to be able to, to modulate between front and rear and, and kind of move between the two. And as much as you're, you're <clears> saying like you don't want to think about it, it's got to be natural. Would you ever do it in like a downhill race where you think like this time I'm going to not break on that corner? Or is it always <clears> just you're not thinking about it, you're just doing it? No, definitely. There's always a few turns where at the start of the weekend you'll come in and you'll think, you know, maybe we can get to the point where, you know, you're, you're not breaking through there. And then by the end of the weekend, you know, you're, you're miles off the brakes, just blasting through. But, you know, that's that's more of a race specific thing, you know, because you're in that environment where you're so on the edge, you know, you can afford to be that loose and, and take those risks. But, you know, I think when you're just day to day riding, I don't think, you know, that's an environment you want to put yourself in. You know, you need to be where you're kind of comfortable and predictable and you know you can you can operate the bike and make it do what you want and you know what's going to happen so 
So if someone like me is just trying to get down a track as fast as they possibly can, what should I do? Just go as fast as I can and brake and as late and as hard as I can? I think it's a real balance. Obviously, you know, overall speed, you just need to try and keep that speed up, keep it as consistent as you can and not lose speed anywhere. But, you know, that being said, sometimes you're coming into a turn where you've got a long straight, you're coming in as fast as you can and you're just braking as late as possible, very last minute. And the only thing to do is just a handful of brake, lock the wheels up, nice and aggressive. But then the extreme other end of that is that gentle feathering, that modulation where you're, you're, you're not locking the wheels, you know, you're keeping it smooth, you're keeping the momentum, you're not upsetting the rhythm of the bike by heavy braking, just a little bit of braking here and there, just to keep it smooth and, and perfect. And, and gauging which one of those you need to do is, you know, that, that comes as you learn the track. Well, I guess if you're, you know, you're hammering too hard and then you then have to brake mid-corner, there might be sections where you've got to roll out as fast, you might carry speed out of it for a long way, where I guess, it's, you know, pays dividends to be a bit safer, maybe be a bit more careful on the brakes and try and come out as fast as you can. Yeah, and generally speaking, that always, you know, usually works better. That, that smooth braking where you're, you're braking nice and early, you're letting off around the turn, you know, that keeps the bike in a, in a consistent, predictable pattern. You know, a handful of brake really upsets what the bike's doing. So if you can keep the braking smooth, you know exactly what it's going to do. You're keeping that speed up and it's a lot easier to kind of feel the trail underneath you as well you feel the bumps you feel that feedback and you know usually that's going to work better for you can you feel how much grip you've got or, i mean sometimes i feel like maybe i can but maybe i need to ride all the time you know something when you're riding all the time you get a real good feel for how much grip you're like your tires are talking to you almost definitely yeah and i think that's where you need to be confident in what's happening when you're going for that approach of you know super late braking handful of brake you need to know exactly what the bike's going to do because as soon as you lock those wheels up, you know, if you're not in a great position or the traction is not great, you know, the bike could be swept from under you. And that's where that smooth braking helps. You know, a little bit of feathering of the brakes, you just feel the edge of the tyre, you feel it start to either bite or, or break away. You know, you can get a lot of feedback from that. You ride a downhill bike, downhill tyres, big brakes. Mm. What sort of uh, tyre pressure have you got? I run the tyre pressures quite soft, really. You know, these crypto towels, they're a good strong sidewall, you know, very supportive. It can get away with 24, 26, pretty much every track. Ever run inserts? I don't know. We run them tubeless with um, the stands, rims and, and sealant, and that's fine for me. I'm not an aggressive rider where I'm really kind of either hammering through the rim or, or ripping them off, so I've, I've found no need. Right, cheers, G, for loaning us your bike park and your skills today. It's been really good. Oh, you're welcome, mate. I think uh, the braking is, it's so easy to overlook it. There's so much you can learn, a bit of detail, a bit of attention to it, and it will make the world of difference to your riding. Give thumbs up if you like watching G ride his Daniel bike.